Hey guys, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com and today I'm going to do a quick tutorial on creating custom knobs for Reactor. And to do this I'm going to use a program called Knobman which is made specifically for designing knobs and other elements as the name implies. If you like this tutorial please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, we have hours and hours of Reactor and other tutorials up. Alright, so let's get started. Okay, so the way that Knobman works is in the left-hand corner here we have a bunch of layers that we can use to add graphical elements to our knob. And each layer has a drop-down menu here, so you can select which graphical type to put on each layer. So to start out, let's make a simple circle. And you see we get all these options here. We can change the color. Um, we can add uh, specular reflections with the, over here. Um, and we can use the emboss to kind of give it a 3D feel if you want. So if you do, you'll notice it kind of gets pixelated and ugly looking. So we also have the diffuse emboss knob that we can use to kind of smooth it out a little bit. <clears throat> all right, and then in this third column over here, we have all sorts of effects that we can add to our elements. Uh, we can use the zoom to make it bigger or smaller, so let's shrink it down a little bit. We can use the offset to kind of move it left and right or up and down if you wanted to, but we're going to keep things centered for now. Uh, you can rotate it, you can make it uh, kind of see-through with the alpha parameter. Uh, you can do all sorts of stuff. So let's create a second layer. This is going to be a line, so we can select that from the drop-down menu. Alright, so notice that these layers are getting added um, in order. So layer 1 is always going to be on the bottom, and then layer 2 will go on top of that, layer 3 will go on top of both of those, etc. So since we shrunk our first knob down with the zoom parameter, Notice that our line here that we just added doesn't really match up with our circle. So we could try to change this with the length parameter over here, but it makes a lot more sense just to zoom the line down to the same size as the circle. All right, sometimes when you make a change in one of these boxes, it doesn't show up on screen immediately, and you can just toggle back between preview and test and it'll usually work. Alright, so the next thing we want to do is to rotate this line so that it turns with a knob. So we're going to use the rotation box for this and the way that it works is we have this angle parameter and zero is going straight up and every quarter circle from there is 90 degrees so to the right here is 90 degrees down is positive 180 degrees going back is negative 90 degrees and going down from there is negative 180 degrees so typically we have a knob that will range from negative 140 to positive 140 degrees and you'll see the limits of that in the first and fifth image in our preview here Okay, so we can make this line a little fatter using the width parameter. And I always like to use the test view instead of the preview view, which you can do right up here at the top. And then you can just kind of drag the knob up and down and get a better feel for how it's going to work once you're using it in Reactor. All right, so another common element of knobs is a little ring around the outside that often will span from the lowest point the knob can point to to the highest point. Or other words, from negative 140 to 140 degrees. So we want to cut out the part of this circle that's not between that area. And to do this, we can use the mask box. We can select the first mask button, 
And then it actually will take care of this for us by default. It's the default setting for that mask. All right, so we can change the color of this. And to create a more dynamic ring, we can duplicate this ring using the duplicate button up top here and change the color of the second ring to be red. And we're going to have this ring follow the line of the knob. So we're going to have the stop point here change from negative 140 to positive 140. So that's what those boxes down there do, is they allow you to have <coughs> a parameter move from one point to another um, as the knob turns. So you'll see now that our red line will follow the knob as it moves. Okay, well, this isn't the greatest looking knob in the world, but I'm not a very good graphic designer either, so that's fine. We can now go to the Preferences menu here and change the width and height if we choose. And we can also set the number of frames that we're going to render. So I like to use 128 frames, which is kind of what reactor will have a knob be by default. It'll say it has 127 steps, but it will actually will generally have 128 different points that it can be at because it's only counting the number of steps from its starting point that it can move. All right, and once you do that, you see now that we're rendering uh, four times as many steps, the knob turns a little slower. It's a little more precise. So we can export this image using the Export Image menu, or alternatively by hitting Control E. And we can save our file. Um, Reactor does just fine with uh, PNG files, which is what Knobman will export by default. So you don't need to worry about that. All right, so once we have that exported, we can fire up Reactor and hop inside, create a knob. We're going to go to the View tab of the Properties. And from the Skin menu, we're going to click Open from File. And we can choose our knob. And we want to make sure that in the Animation part here, we select the number of animations and set it to 128. And we can select OK. And when we go back to the panel, we have our knob. And so again, this is just a very quick, not a very beautiful knob, but you get the idea. All right, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please check out our website as well. We have a ton of written tutorials that uh, I'm able to get a little bit more in depth on a lot of subjects in. So give us a visit. All right, have a good week.